Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the Waccamaw Conference. Uh, we're really excited that you're all joining us this morning. My name is Maeve Snyder. I'm the Coastal Training Program Coordinator at the North Inlet Winya Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve. I have a few other presenters um, on the call today and I'll have them introduce themselves in just a minute. So the Waccamaw Conference theme for this year is Confluence, the Blue Trail Connection. And we're really glad that you're all up bright and early to join, with, join us on a, a journey to Lake Waccamaw. Um, go ahead. Oh, and I wanna give a special shout out to students from the Richmond Early College Earth and Environmental class. They're here, um, I think, earning some extra credit. So thank you guys for joining us. Um, before we jump in, I wanna give a few Zoom notes. Um, I think a lot of us are familiar with Zoom by now, but just in case you haven't used Zoom webinar, um, you'll be muted and your uh, microphone will be off during the webinar. It helps if you close any other programs or any other tabs on your computer. And if you're having any technical difficulties, we recommend leaving the webinar and rejoining and that'll solve a lot of problems. Um, but if you have any te technical questions, you can put them in the Q&A box. And I'll show you where that is. So at the bottom of your screen, you should have a control panel. We're not gonna use that raised hand button today, but if you do have a question, you can drop it in the Q&A box at any time. We definitely encourage you to ask questions. We might type a response or we might answer your question live on screen. Um, and if you need to leave and come back, it's that red button in the corner. I also wanna note that we're recording the webinar today um, and we'll post it on the, um, the conference YouTube channel so that you can go back and watch it or share it later on. All right, so the Waccamaw Conference is hosted by a number of partners. Um, I mentioned I'm with the North Inlet Winya Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve, and I have another colleague on the call. So Haley, do you wanna come on and introduce yourself? Sure thing. So it says you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. Could you put my video on for me? Yes, I will change that for you. Thank you. Go ahead and give an intro. <laughs> awesome. So, hey guys, my name is Haley Fournier and I'm the education specialist for the North Inlet Winyaw Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve. And I'm so excited to join you guys on the Waccamaw Conference. And I myself was able to uh, go to a lot of these places and videotape some of them. So thanks for joining us. Thanks, Haley. All right, we also have um, Kara Schultner. Do you want to come on? <laughs> you got it. Hi, I'm Kara Schultner. I'm your Waccamaw River Keeper, and I'm coming to you today live from Lake Waccamaw. Um, it's a little dreary out here this morning, a little bit chilly, but still always a gorgeous day to visit Lake Waccamaw. And we are really excited to bring y'all here today with us on this journey down the Waccamaw River Blue Trail. Um, and a little bit more about the Blue Trail and about Lake Waccamaw here in a little bit. So I'm happy to be with you and it's gonna be a great webinar this morning. Thanks, Kara, our live correspondent in the field. Um, and I also wanna acknowledge our planning partner, American Rivers. So um, thank you to all who helped make this conference possible. And I just wanna give a quick overview of our webinar today. We're gonna to start with a presentation from Kara. It's gonna be a pre-recorded video since she's out at Lake Waccamaw today. Um, and then we'll actually go live to Lake Waccamaw where Kara is gonna take us along for water quality sampling with the volunteer monitors. So I just wanna quickly um, explain that the Waccamaw Conference this year is structured around a journey down the Waccamaw watershed. And we're gonna start at the source in Lake Waccamaw. Um, but the Waccamaw watershed is a huge area um, and it spans two states, North Carolina and South Carolina, and ends at Winya Bay down in Georgetown, South Carolina. So all of this area is connected by the river and it travels over 140 miles. Um, and I just wanna point out that each week of the Waccamaw Conference, we're gonna focus on a different section of the river. This week, we're up at Lake Waccamaw, and in following weeks, 
We'll move to the North Carolina, South Carolina state line, the Conway, Horry County area, the Waccamaw Refuge and the Waccamaw Neck, and finally, Winyah Bay. But we wanted to take a second and find out where all of you are coming from. So I'm gonna launch a poll really quickly. And uh, if you could tell us where in the Waccamaw watershed you are today. All right, I see a few answers coming in. And we'll give it just another minute. All right, that's almost everyone voted. So let's go ahead and see the results. All right, so it looks like most people are up at the North Carolina, South Carolina state line. So that's great. Um, you're pretty close to Lake Waccamaw, but it's really nice to see that we have people throughout the Waccamaw watershed and even some people from other places. All right, I wanna ask one more poll question for you all, which is, have you ever been to Lake Waccamaw? Lake Waccamaw's, uh, it's not in the middle of nowhere, but it's pretty far from, you know, major towns. So I'm curious to hear how many people have been there. All right. So the majority of people have not been to Lake Waccamaw, but I love that a lot of you say that someday you will. That's the spirit. <laughs> and for those who have, um, it's a really special place, right? So I'm gonna stop sharing. Oh, did I share the results? Here, now you can see. <laughs> so like I said, most of you have not. I hope that someday you will make a special trip to see Lake Waccamaw. All right, so at this point, I'm going to switch over to a presentation from Kara, our Waccamaw Riverkeeper. you'll give me just a moment. All right, and then Haley, if you could let me know um, if you hear the sound when it starts playing. We are going to take a dive into a Carolina Bay at Lake Waccamaw. Were you able to hear that? Yes. All right, here we go. We're going to learn all about the lake, a little bit about Carolina Bays, the species that call Lake Waccamaw home, and also Maybe it stopped. All right, everyone, thanks for bearing with us. Zoom is uh, finicky. Hundred eighty three acres. So We're going to take a dive into a Carolina Bay at Lake Waccamaw. We're going to learn all about the lake, a little bit about Carolina Bays, the species that call Lake Waccamaw home, and also about the unique water quality at Lake Waccamaw. So let's dive in. Lake Waccamaw covers 8,983 acres. It's a pretty big lake. The average depth of the lake is only seven and a half feet. The shoreline along the lake covers 14 miles. Bottom of the lake is mostly sand around the shore with peat in the middle. Lake Waccamaw is the beginning of the Blue Trail. It's estimated to be about 15,000 to 300,000 years old. 
Lake Waccamaw is a blackwater lake fed by swamps. Unlike many lakes that are fed by streams or rivers, Lake Waccamaw gets all of its water from the surrounding swamps, making it a blackwater lake just like our swamps and river. It is also one of the largest Carolina bays and one of the biggest Carolina bays that's constantly filled with water. A cool fact about the lake is that the fossilized remains of, the, of a whale was found in the lake. The fossils are thought to be one to three million years old. Prehistorically, the lake was part of a shallow coastal ocean. That's probably why the whale was found there. But what is a Carolina Bay? Carolina Bays are elliptical depressions aligned in a northwest to southwest direction all along the, east, the Atlantic seaboard from New Jersey to Florida. You can see in the image that Lake Waccamaw at the bottom is one of the Carolina Bays. And then there are several other Carolina Bays towards the north. And you can see that they're all elliptical and situated in the same direction. Carolina Bays can vary in size from one acre to thousands of acres, like Lake Waccamaw. These Carolina Bays can either be dry year round they can be wetlands, or some of them are filled with water year-round in our lakes. A lot of Carolina bays have been developed and are now part of farmland or have been mined for the sand that makes up the bays. But how were these Carolina bays formed? The real answer? Nobody knows. But there are some possible answers. Some people think that they were glacial lakes formed thousands of years ago. Other people think that they could be the result of ancient sea currents moving in an, a round, circular motion. Groundwater upwelling has been suggested as one reason for these strange bays throughout the Atlantic seaboard. Another idea is that they're from prehistoric peat fires. Some bays, like Lake Waccamaw, have peat bogs in the middle and people think that maybe there were peat fires that created these strange depressions. One older idea was that these were created by a meteorite that hit the earth and then shattered into a bunch of pieces and made all these strange depressions in the same area. One of my favorite theories is that they're dinosaur footprints, although that seems pretty far-fetched. What do you think form the Carolina Bays? The most accepted scientific reason right now is probably the glacial lakes hypothesis. So that could be it, but nobody really knows. Lake Waccamaw is really special. It's home to several endemic species. An endemic species is a species that exists nowhere else in the world. Lake Waccamaw is home to seven endemic species. There are three fish, fish species that call the lake home, the Waccamaw killifish, Waccamaw darter, and the Waccamaw silverside. Again, these fish species are found nowhere else in the world, just at Lake Waccamaw. There are also two mollusk species that call Lake Waccamaw home, and only Lake Waccamaw home, the Waccamaw spike, and my favorite named mollusk, the Waccamaw fat mucket. If you're ever at the lake, you can see these in the shallow shoreline, and you can pick them right up from your kayak. Remember, the lake isn't all that deep, so you can see these pretty easily even if they are on the bottom of the lake. There are also two snail species that call the lake home, the Waccamaw silt snail and the Waccamaw omnicola. These two species only exist here, but they are part of a number of snail and mollusk species that call Lake Waccamaw home. Lake Waccamaw has a lot of diverse biodiversity and it's known to have all these cool species that exist there. But why are they all there? Why is Lake Waccamaw so special and allows for all these unique species to live here and nowhere else, along with all the other species that live in Lake Waccamaw? And yes, in case you're wondering, Lake Waccamaw does have alligators. Uh, you can see them in the lake and you can also see them in the canals during the spring and summer where they go to breed. But again, why? Why are all these cool species here? What makes this place so unique? Well, it's all about the pH. 
Lake Waccamaw is strangely neutral. Um, if you look at the pH scale, you know that lower pH means that the water is acidic. Um, so to put it into our terms, uh, lower pH is more things like black coffee and tomato juice and lemon juice and all those things that kind of tend to upset your stomach. Whereas things that are more basic tend to settle that out. So if you have something acidic and basic come together, you end up with neutral. So if you want to neutralize that heartburn you've got from your black coffee, you might have some Alka-Seltzer or something like that that's basic and then you can neutralize your stomach and make it feel a little bit better. So how does this work at Lake Waccamaw? Because we know that Blackwater rivers tend to be more acidic because of all the decomposing organic matter that's in there. So Lake Waccamaw is pretty unique. We have one major tributary that comes into the lake, which is Big Creek. So water with low pH, which is a little bit acidic, enters the lake from swamps via Big Creek. Again, the low pH comes from all the um, acid and tannic acid that is released when um, organic matter degrades and breaks down. So you have this low pH water coming in from Big Creek. So it enters the river here, and then it comes in and it reacts with the limestone bluffs there in green. Along the northern shore of Lake Waccamaw, there are limestone bluffs, and limestone, when it interacts with water, causes a neutralization, so that pH comes up a little bit to more of a neutral pH. Often when we sample water quality at Lake Waccamaw, we end up with a pH around 7, which is right in the middle of the pH scale and is neutral. So then, once the water interacts with the limestone, it exits Lake Waccamaw and begins the Waccamaw River Blue Trail with more neutral waters. However, as the river travels down through other swamps in the watershed, it will start picking up more of that organic material that breaks down and then makes the water a little bit more acidic. So once you get further down the river, you will start seeing more acidic waters again. But how do we know all of this about Lake Waccamaw? How do we know about the water quality in Lake Waccamaw? Well, we have four volunteer water quality monitoring sites at Lake Waccamaw. Those sites are the dam at Lake Waccamaw, and that is where the Waccamaw River Blue Trail starts as the water leaves Lake Waccamaw and begins the Waccamaw River. You'll notice in the image of the dam at Lake Waccamaw that the dam isn't what you would typically consider a dam. It's not a way to release water. It's more of a spillway that just keeps some water in the lake, um, but it maintains that level most of the time anyways. So that's our site at the dam at Lake Waccamaw. It's beautiful. You can see the boardwalk that helps complete the trail around the river or around the lake that's part of um, Lake Waccamaw State Park. Our second sampling site is at Canal Cove at Lake Waccamaw. And this is a site that water enters the lake from the canal, which goes along the shore of Lake Waccamaw. And it has pretty different water quality than what we actually see in the lake. Uh, Canal Cove has water contributing to it that comes from agriculture land. So we often see different water quality at that site than we would in the lake. Our third sampling site is at Maple Street on Lake Waccamaw, and it is off of a private dock that we have permission to sample from. It is a gorgeous location. It's one of my favorite sampling sites in the entire volunteer water quality mo monitoring program in the Waccamaw River watershed. Um, as you can see, it's out on the lake. It's beautiful, and we often see pretty neutral uh, pH there and good water quality at this site. This site has really great water quality, which is good because a lot of people like to use Lake Waccamaw for recreation. Our fourth and final volunteer monitoring site on the lake is at Big Creek. And Big Creek is that major tributary that brings water into the lake from the surrounding swamps uh, north of Lake Waccamaw. 
So you can see that it's a, it's a blackwater creek. It's got cypress trees in it, um, which help contribute to that slightly acidic water that we see. It's another gorgeous site. All of our sites at Lake Waccamaw are beautiful. And I would say that all of the sites in the Waccamaw River watershed are pretty beautiful. A little bit more about our volunteer water quality monitoring program. Uh, our volunteers have been monitoring at the lake since 2011. We have two teams, teams eight and nine on the Waccamaw that cover the lake sites. Uh, these volunteers have been, a lot of them have been sampling with us since the beginning of the program and we're really lucky to have such dedicated volunteers. They were even out this past year during COVID. You can see them all masked up and enjoying uh, a sampling day at the dam at Lake Waccamaw. Um, our volunteers are awesome, and we're really excited that we get to talk to them a little bit later, and you'll get to hear about their experience doing volunteer water monitoring. And our monitors uh, volunteer twice a month. They go out on the second and fourth Wednesday of the month and do their water quality sampling. And I mean, what an enviable volunteer position to get to go out on beautiful Lake Waccamaw and take water quality samples. Our volunteers sample for a variety of water quality parameters, including temperature, conductivity, dissolved oxygen, pH, turbidity, nutrients, and bacteria. And all of these data are recorded in an online database that are accessible to the public. You can follow the link, which will be in the chat, to see the water quality data for yourself. You can even download uh, graphs and data and analyze it for yourself. It's a really interactive and a really great way to get a better understanding of the water quality in our watershed. Our volunteer water quality monitoring program uses a variety of equipment. Our Orion Star multi-parameter probe is what we use to take measurements of temperature, dissolved oxygen, conductivity, and pH, and those are done directly at the site. We also use the Hawk portable turbidimeter to take turbidity samples at the lake. That's typically done back at the lab or back at home, depending on who's doing the readings. We use nutrient test strips to test for ammonia, nitrate, and nitrate. And these nutrients are important to help us identify potential pollution in the watershed. Um, and that is also done at the site. Our volunteers also collect water samples to do ColliScan Easy Gel bacteria test, where they test for total coliforms as well as E. coli. And E. coli is one of those important water quality parameters that we use to identify the health of our watershed and also recreational water health to make sure that it's safe for people to go jump in the lake or swim in the river. So let's look at the data from our volunteer water quality monitoring program. These graphs that I'll be showing you use all the data from 2011 through last sampling date, which was March 10th. Um, all of that data is available. You can check it out online. You can analyze it for yourself. But we want to look at a couple parameters that are used to assess recreational water quality. Um, pH is used. Um, as we mentioned before, Lake Waccamaw has a neutral um, pH typically. Neutral pH is good water quality typically. You want it to be between 5 and 8 on the pH scale. And as you can see, most of our data that we've collected falls between those that range. Um, you'll notice that the Lake Waccamaw Dam and the Maple Street site have very similar water quality data. That's because both of those sites are in the lake. And then Canal Cove and Big Creek tend to be a little bit more acidic. And that's because those are two tributaries bringing in that acidic water from our swamps. But you can also see that most of our data fits between those safe recreational water quality um, parameters. So We've got good pH at Lake Waccamaw. Turbidity is another important water quality parameter that we measure. Um, turbidity is how much um, 
particles are suspended in the water, so how cloudy the water is. A lot of people think that the Waccamaw River and Lake Waccamaw have high turbidity because they're that dark tea color, but that's not actually true. Um, when we talk about turbidity, we aren't referring to the color, but more to the cloudiness. So if you see those suspended particles and the water actually looks dirty, like literally dirty with pieces of soil and sediments that are suspended in the water. Um, the recreational water quality criteria for turbidity is 50 NTUs, which is pretty high. Once you see that, you can visibly tell that there are suspended particles in the water. But as you can see, all of our data um, is below that. And we are looking at a box plot. So you can see that the middle of those boxes is where the mean value is, where it typically is. And then those little dots that you'll see are outliers. So those are above the 90th percentile. That's abnormal for what we would see. Um, but within those box and whisker plots, so you have the two little T's on the top and bottom and then the actual box, that is your 10th to 90th percentile of your readings. But what's in the box is the 25th to 75th percentile. So those are actually showing you what's the normal range for the river. And because we have done water quality monitoring for so long, we can accurately say that that's the normal range. But you can tell that the normal range for turbidity at the lake is typically pretty low. Um, even for Big Creek, it's really low. Canal Cove tends to have a little bit higher turbidity, and that's because it is fed from agriculture lands, and sometimes you get runoff during big st storms that'll show that. Um, a closer look at this, and you can see how far and spread out some of those numbers are for Canal Cove and even for the dam, um, but this shows you how low the turbidity typically is. It's typically below 10 um, and even probably more below 7 at most of these places all the time. So turbidity is typically low at our sites, which is good because if you have a lot of suspended solids in your water, that means that light can't penetrate and that your benthic plants or the plants that grow on the bottom of the of the river or streams and lake can't get that light that they need to grow. And that can be a problem. The last parameter that we're going to look at in our little dive into the data is going to be dissolved oxygen or DO. And you'll see that red line at four, and that is four milligrams per liter. And typically, if the dissolved oxygen in the water is below four milligrams per liter, you will typically see some issues with fish not being able to breathe. Even though fish don't breathe air like we do, they still need oxygen to survive. So when the dissolved oxygen in the water is lower than that, you can sometimes see die-offs um, or fish kills. However, in our black water system in the Waccamaw River watershed, uh, we typically see lower dissolved oxygen. Sometimes oftentimes it's typically closer to between four and two. So the real threshold on the Waccamaw is when it gets below two milligrams per liter. Um, once it starts getting that low, you will start to see fish kills because there's just not enough oxygen. But the reason it's different in Blackwater Rivers is because you have all of that digestion and decomposition of organic material going on, and that takes up oxygen. So we typically have lower oxygen in the Waccamaw, but our, plant, or our fish life and other aquatic life is adapted to that, and they're used to it. You will notice that um, the dam site and the Maple Street site often have very high dissolved oxygen. And that's because it's the lake um, and that oxygen can be elevated due to wind currents that stir the water or the fact that um, there's more sunlight and there's less decomposition going on in the lake than there are in our tributaries. So we often see higher dissolved oxygen in the lake than we do elsewhere in the water qual or throughout the watershed. So are there issues facing Lake Waccamaw in terms of water quality? 
Well, the one great thing is that Lake Waccamaw has really good recreational water quality overall. This chart shows how often our Lake Waccamaw sites meet recreational water quality standards. And you'll notice that for most parameters, for pH, turbidity, and E. coli, we meet water quality criteria at those sites more than 95% of the time. And that is really excellent. Now, the only uh, parameter or water quality criteria that we tend to see an issue with is dissolved oxygen. Um, and that's true throughout most of the Waccamaw River, um, except for our lake sites. And the reason for that, again, is because of all that decomposition that's going on, which brings down dissolved oxygen. And so it doesn't meet that criteria of four milligrams per liter often. But uh, people who study the Waccamaw know that that's actually pretty typical, and it's not something that we have to be overly concerned about, but when it starts getting below that 2 milligrams per liter, that's when we start to worry, and we really have to look into what issues could be causing that. Now, while there still is really great water quality at Lake Waccamaw, there are still some issues that are facing our lake and could cause potential pollution issues. One of those issues is concentrated animal feeding operations, or CAFOs. In our watershed, these tend to be industrial hog farms where there are lots and lots of pigs gathered in one place, and then the waste from those pigs is collected in lagoons. And if the lagoons happen to flood or overflow, or that waste gets sprayed into our waterways, that can cause water quality issues both in terms of nutrients and turbidity and even worse in E. coli. Um, and you'll see on the map all of these orange circles are concentrated animal feeding operations within the Waccamaw watershed above Lake Waccamaw. So these could cause serious problems if there was runoff that eventually made it to Lake Waccamaw. Another issue that we face is plastic pollution and other trash. Um, there was a really great image, but also kind of a sad image, of an alligator in the canal at Lake Waccamaw last summer on a pool floaty. He was just sunning himself on this inflatable floaty, but we don't want that kind of plastic pollution and trash in our waterways. So we hope that you will join us and help us combat this issue during our confluence cleanups this, this uh, next couple Saturdays. Our first cleanup is going to be this Saturday, March 27th from 9 to 12, and we will be at Lake Waccamaw State Park. So come by, see us at the Visitor Center, grab what you need to do your cleanup, and go out and enjoy Lake Waccamaw while helping us keep it clean and pretty for people to enjoy. Um, plastic pollution and trash is a really easy thing to combat. Um, we can always make an impact on that, whereas other issues might be a little bit harder to fix in the near future. But we hope you'll come join us to round out our week of Lake Waccamaw activities, and then next week we will be moving on to the state line section of our river. But right now, let's go live to Lake Waccamaw with our volunteer monitors and the Waccamaw Riverkeeper, and they are going to take us through a sampling at Maple Street, one of our prettiest sites on the, on the river for sampling. Um, so let's go check it out and see what they find today. All right, Kara, we're ready to go. Take us live to Lake Waccamaw. All right, here at Lake Waccamaw. Can y'all hear me? Good? <laughs> yes, um, it's a little quiet, but we can hear you. Well, we'll just have to yell through our masks. Um, we're still wearing masks, obviously, because we want to keep our volunteers safe and our river keeper. Um, we kind of care about her too. Um, but I am here today at Maple Street, which is one of our sampling sites. And I'm here with Julie and Stuart. And they've gotten started on doing some sampling here. We have collected our water. We're equilibrating our sensors so that we can make sure we get accurate readings. Um, and we've also done our nitrate and ammonia strips. So we've got those done. And we might be having another volunteer join us here, but we will see. So um, Julie, 
what's next? Now we are going to do dissolved oxygen. And we take two measurements of that and do percentage in milligrams per liter. All right, so we're going to be doing dissolved oxygen. And the way we do that is with our um, Orion meter. And so they're going to be looking for percentage um, and then also milligrams per liter as well as temperature. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And it's it's very interesting. You press a button. It's really exciting. And then you wait. <laughs> and then you wait. <laughs> but now we have calibrated this. We've master calibrated it and he is field calibrated. Right. So we are sure that the meter is, act, is operating correctly. Yeah, our, our volunteers are all trained. Everybody gets training when they come into the program so that they know how to do everything. And one of the checks that we do to make sure that we're getting really good, accurate data is that we calibrate our meter every time we have a sampling. So Stuart's our master calibrator. He has done that. He does an excellent job. Um, and then we do a check at our first site. And that check is to make sure that our meter is reading correctly. And we do that with buffer solutions that we already know are correct. So we're starting to get some readings here. It looks like dissolved oxygen is actually pretty high today. All right, so our percent saturation is 101.2%. And that's what we would expect to see here. Okay. We haven't had any major rain. Exactly. Yeah, it's been it's been dry after our two months of rain, basically. So we're we're glad to start seeing normal uh, water quality back here. This one takes a long time to click in. It does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we read three different parameters with our meter, and a dissolved oxygen is always the slowest. It just takes a little bit to get ready to go. And we've got Amanda joining us now. Come on up. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. We've got Amanda joining us. I'm going to step over here so I can see what's going on. I do. Rosemary. Oh, thank you. Okay. Good luck, Rosemary. <laughs> All right. So we've got our volunteers. They're doing their sampling. Amanda is our agitator, apparently. She's she's stirring. <laughs> so Amanda, how long have you been a volunteer with our program? How long have you been doing this for eight years? Okay. Wow. So Amanda and Julie have been doing this for eight years. What about you, Stuart? You're you're a little bit newer. Three or four. I think you came on right about the same time that I did. So yeah, about three or four years. That's awesome. So we're doing our DO and our, our volunteers are the stars of the show right now. Um, and while we're doing this, y'all, if you have questions, go ahead and pop them into the Q&A and um, we'll get to them. I'm looking here. One thing that I want okay. to tell them, Kara, is about our lake normal, how we have established lake, lake normal because we've been doing it so long. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we've got our photographer with us today documenting what we're up to. So just ignore the, the man behind you. Um, <laughs> but Julie mentioned our lake normal and we mentioned earlier in the presentation that, um, you know, we've been doing this since 2011, 2012. And we've established what is normal for these sites. So once we take our measurements, we will check our percentiles and make sure that our readings are within those normal ranges. And um, that way we'll know whether we're getting good, good data. I'm sorry, I'm bobbling the... the tripod. So are you guys still doing DO or have you moved on to a new one? All right. I'm going to actually move us a little bit closer so we can see what y'all are doing. Oh, Don't worry about it. Well, You're doing perfect. We're reading this game. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I can't see 
Kara, I have a question. Let's see. All right. Hey, Kara, question. Let me switch it. Give me just a second, me. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are toggled to conductivity. That is a TDS right there. And then we can, okay. And there's your conductivity. All right, all right. Let's measure. Do it again. All right, well, sounds like we have a question. What is our question, Maeve? I wanted to ask, which of the four sites are you sampling at today? We are at Maple Street. So we're at one of our lake sites um, and Maple Street is gorgeous. I can show you a little bit of where we are. We are on this beautiful private dock on Lake Waccamaw. Um, we are super lucky that we have a homeowner that will let us use their dock for sampling because it's hard to get sampling sites that are really out in the middle of the lake. And um, Stuart and Amanda came to us today from, they've already done uh, the dam and Canal Cove. So we've, we're down to one site left um, and we'll continue on to that after the webinar here. And they're, they're still taking their readings. And we're not, we're not seeing much drift. Not much drift. So um, Julie mentions drift. And when we take our readings, we take three readings of each parameter. And we wanna make sure that those readings look similar. Um, so we look for drift and that's making sure that they're within a close range of one another. And she's saying it's looking good, which is what we like to hear. It means our meter's working good. <laughs> and everybody has a different job, you can tell. So Amanda is our, our timer and our meter agitator today. <laughs> and Julie is our, our scribe or our recorder for the data. She's got good handwriting, so we like when she does that. <laughs> if you have bad handwriting, you're not allowed to be the scribe. Because um, then the poor person who has to enter the data can't read whatever you're doing. Um, and Stuart is our meter reader today. So he's controlling the meter and maybe I can come over there and kind of sneak behind you guys and get a look at this meter. <laughs> All right, let's see. It's probably not gonna focus too well, but. Is it lost? Doing a little bit of lighting stuff in here. I'm gonna sneak in Seven, here. It's like 11, big. Eight point five degrees. So you can see what they're doing, and we are reading pH. So what's the pH looking like? Seven point eleven. All right, so pretty neutral. Yeah. All right. We mentioned earlier that we would see pretty neutral, and that's because of the um, the limestone bluffs that cause a neutralizing action on that acidic water that comes in from our swamps. So as you can see, this is very exciting, waiting for the meter to read. 7.11, <laughs> 15.5. Okay. But you can see there's not much change or drift and that's good. Yeah, these numbers are actually looking really good. And this is, this is our data sheet that we use to record everything. You can see Julie's pretty handwriting. <laughs> and as you can see, our volunteers have a blast doing this. They, I mean, what better way to spend a morning out here at beautiful Lake Waccamaw? All right. And those are our last readings that we're going to take. So we've got three for each of them. So I'm going to move back over here. Sorry for moving us all around, y'all. But I want to know, Maeve, does anyone have questions for our volunteers today? Uh, we had one question about um, how the, the volunteer water quality monitoring program is supported. Are there any organizations that, that support it in North Carolina? There are, there are. We have um, a bunch of different 
funders. Um, in North Carolina, we are funded by, um, we're funded by International Paper. We get a grant from them. We also get money from the Friends of Lake Waccamaw State Park. They give us a small grant each year to do um, volunteer monitoring. So those are major partners. Oh, and Columbus County, shout out to Columbus County for giving us um, some money to do volunteer monitoring. So we are now about to take our uh, bacteria and turbidity samples that will then be taken back to the lab and analyzed um, there, so. <laughs> And of course, recording time is really important because we have hold times. So these water quality samples have to be kept on ice and kept cold. Um, and we have eight hours from the time we take our um, bacteria sample until we get it in the incubator and get it processed. Otherwise you could start to get more um, microbial growth and that wouldn't be good. So I'm gonna sneak over here and we're just gonna watch what Stuart's up to. Yeah. He's grabbing our sample for us. <laughs> I don't understand how you use this book. <laughs> I've got another one that, that has, I need to go over here. <laughs> so Stuart doesn't normally sample here. Yeah, I'm out in the other side. <laughs> We are, our, our volunteers have been very cooperative with me so that we could come out here with them today. Um, and we really appreciate them being flexible and being awesome. All right, we have our samples. <laughs> Amanda, can you bring me that little white lid? Yes. <laughs> Teamwork over here. We love it. Maeve, do we have any other questions that we can answer for y'all today? So we have a question for the volunteers. So it might be good to hold it until they're not in the middle of their important jobs. Um, but we just, someone wanted to ask how they first got involved and what they like about it. They wanna you know, hear from the volunteers. Excellent. Yeah, we'd love to hear that. So we'll let them finish up and then we'll, we'll let them kind of take over the show and we'll ask them a couple questions. Um, the turbidity is under here. I need All the right. bottle. <laughs> I've been at Lake Waccamaw for um, 45 years, and I like to swim, um, swim regularly in the summer. Um, I have swum across the lake. My daughter and son have, and my grandchildren now are wanting to learn to swim, or, or swimming, and they want to swim. So we have one uh, of quality water. Where's the lid? <laughs> I have it. Uh, <laughs> And it's, yeah, it's oh. important that we have swimmable, fishable, and clean water and it's a kayak. So those of us that um, live here have a big investment in keeping Lake Waccamaw pure and, and have good water. Yeah, that's, that's a great reason to want to make sure we have clean water. And we're glad to have you involved. Stuart, yeah. how'd, you get, how'd you get involved in this and why do you like doing it? <laughs> I rode my golf cart by the boat ramp one day and saw my friends out there sampling water and, and I asked what they were doing and within two weeks I was doing it with them. <laughs> but it's um I know it's important for we have I think probably seven indigenous species of yes. fish and <laughs> mollusk and snails that uh you know we need to keep our place clean and I live here on the lake and I wanted to be here for my children and grandchildren. So, you know, yeah. I feel like it's an important thing. I agree. To stay ahead of anything that might be contaminant, contamination or anything. That... Yeah. And Miss Mandy, do you want to come in a little bit into our screen so we can get everybody in here? What about you? What got you interested in doing volunteer monitoring on the lake? Well, when I was a kid, I used to come down here with my dad fishing. Um, because he was a great fisherman. And eventually I moved to the lake 
and uh, uh, anyway, I went to a meeting at the state park about uh, the uh, water monitoring, and I thought this is a good thing to do because I live down here, and uh, I think the lake is very important in our county and in our state and for all of the citizens who live here. That's great. Do you guys think that by doing volunteer monitoring, you feel like better that the lake's being protected? Does it does it give you a little bit of peace of mind that you can go jump in the lake? And I'm very concrete. And so when I see that it's still stay, it's staying relatively clean, mm -hmm. it's very reassuring. That's great. It is, it is uh, comforting to know that the numbers we get are clean, the pH is clean, um, when people and live in. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's beautiful here. I'm I'm always saying I want to move to the lake. I'm jealous of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> we love and I want my great grandsons. <laughs> Enjoy the lake as much as I do. Yeah, yeah. Maeve, do we have any other questions? Uh, not at the moment, but anyone watching, feel free to add a question to the Q&A. You can ask Kara, you can ask the water quality monitors. Um, but for now, I think we're good. Okay, all right. Well, is there anything else y'all wanna tell us about, about volunteer monitoring or about the lake or anything? Um, I think we have wonderful support for you and from Coastal Carolina with um, Absolutely. The, the, yeah, the, uh, you know, any questions that we have, I carry right there. <laughs> What's going on with the neighbor? What's going on? Is this a good reading? It's thank you for that. Well, thank you. And the miles you pull your car, close your check on us. <laughs> yeah. Check on us and help us. And to replenish our supplies. Yes. Of course. You. Yeah. And today I'm going to be taking all of the volunteer supplies because we do quarterly kit maintenance to make sure that our volunteers have everything that they need and that the meters are working correctly. And this this volunteer monitoring program is a well-oiled machine. Like we, we know what we're doing <laughs> for the most part, right? <laughs> Kara, we did have another question. How many uh, monitors are at the lake? Oh, good question. How many people do we have on Team 8? So Stuart and Amanda four, are from Team 8. Four members on Team 8. Okay. Amanda, myself, and Danny, and um, Patty. 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 And Danny and Patty couldn't be here today. But. And how many are on Team 9? We have five, and then one that is still with COVID, not with us yet. Yeah. Six. Yep. So that is 10 monitors on Lake Waccamaw over two teams. And we have two other volunteer monitors in North Carolina and then a bunch more in South Carolina. But we've got 10 up here and we might, I didn't tell you guys this yet, but we've got an interested new volunteers. We might get some new volunteers up here. Yeah. Any more questions, Maeve? Uh, that's it for now, but thank you to, to you and the monitors for answering questions. Yeah, thank you guys so much. We appreciate you. All right, and we're going to let them go on and get to their next site. Um, I'm going to be with you guys for a couple more minutes. And um, yeah, so if we have questions and we can wrap this up. Yeah, um, feel free to ask any other questions. But in the meantime, I'm going to share a few updates about um, upcoming seminars and upcoming events with the Waccamaw Conference. The first thing I'm going to do is drop some information in the chat box so that everyone can uh, check out some links. And then I'll, I'm going to pull up another PowerPoint with a few reminders. Um, so the first thing is that you all heard from Kara Schultnack, the Waccamaw Riverkeeper today. I'm going to share her contact information in case you want to learn more about the volunteer water quality monitoring program or, you know, any other questions about the Waccamaw Conference. So here's how you can get in touch with Kara. And I also want to share the database for the volunteer monitoring program. 
And this is where you can actually go in and explore for yourself the data that they collect, not just at Lake Waccamaw, but throughout the Waccamaw watershed. You can look at it at different times in different places. Um, so you can really see for yourself what they, um, what they find when they go out and do this sampling. Kara also mentioned that we have a series of confluence cleanups. These are our Waccamaw Conference uh, cleanup events happening every Saturday for the next month. And we'd love if you would come out and join us. They're at a variety of locations so that people can join from all over the Waccamaw watershed. And I'm gonna post the link to um, the website where you can learn more about those in the chat. And then the last thing I want to mention is that this is the the source seminar series. Um, so our next seminar will feature um, Cheryl Severs Kale, who is the vice chief of the Waccamaw Indian people talking about indigenous communities along the Waccamaw. Um, and I'm going to post the link for that in the chat as well, where you can go in and register for this next seminar. All right, so feel free to check out those links. And the last thing I want to do is just give a few reminders. All right, so a reminder that the Waccamaw Conference is an entire month of events spanning from World Water Day, which was this past Monday, to Earth Day. So from March 22nd to April 22nd. And we hope that you'll um, check out the variety of activities that we have going on. And you can learn all about it at the Waccamaw Conference uh, website. Um, the link is there. And then um, I think it's in the chat as well. And just a reminder, our next seminar um, about the Waccamaw Indian people will be next Wednesday from 6.30 to 7.30 in the evening. Um, and that will be recorded and posted on our YouTube channel as well. All right, so with that, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to attend. I'd like to thank Kara and the volunteer water quality monitors. Uh, we'll stick around for another minute if you have any questions. But uh, other than that, I hope you all have a great day and thank you again. Maeve, I just want to say thank you to everybody for joining us, and I hope that they learned a little bit about the lake and enjoyed meeting our volunteers. A huge, huge thank you to our Lake Waccamaw volunteers um, for everything they do. And I know you can't see me right now, but how gorgeous is this view? Um, if you are interested in volunteer monitoring here at the lake or anywhere along the Waccamaw River, um, please feel free to contact me. I think Maeve put my information in the chat, um, but reach out, let us know. We will get you trained. We will teach you everything you need to know, get you all the equipment you need. Um, and I always tell people you don't need to have a science background. You don't need to know anything about water quality. That's what the Riverkeeper and the Waccamaw Watershed Academy is here for. We are here to support our volunteers and get them the technical and sometimes emotional support that they need. <laughs> Thanks, Kara. Thank you. All right, well, with that, I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up.